Looks like it's time to kill. <laughs> My home away from home. There's a new sheriff in town. I feel good. Want some of this? <laughs> I already broke that habit. Ooh, that hit the spot. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your chicks. Who's your daddy? Is it true that Roman girls have Roman hands? <laughs> Look. James Brains of Bang Life with a flashback back to the PlayStation 1 era and for Duke Nukem Time to Kill, a third person shooter video. Yes, you heard that right, third person shooter game developed by N Space and published by GT Interactive Software. 
It was released in North America on September 30th, 98, and in the EU on February 15th, 1999. Uh, gameplay control is very similar to Tomb Raider, a fact they like to make a joke about all throughout the game. The game also features two-player deathmatch options where you fight each other in an environment similar to the actual uh, main game. Things we like, things we don't like, and favorite moments, scenes, bits of music. Now, I'm going to take a wild guess here. You love this game as much as I love this game, yes? Oh, oh, 100%. Favorite Duke Nukem game? Oh, oh well, compared, compared to the fact that our, our, our only other experience was what, Duke Nukem Time, uh, Duke Nukem 3D, and probably Land of the Babes, was it? I, mean, I think it was that, was that yeah. The one yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, compared to Duke Nukem 3D, which is absolutely impossible and really difficult, that, that game was... Hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Time to Kill was fantastic. Yeah, A Time to Kill just touched us in the right place. Um, whereas, like, we knew Duke Nukem 3D, but you're right, I didn't love Duke Nukem 3 I actually like Duke Nukem 3D more now than I did back then, uh, as yeah. I kind of get out of play it more. But, uh, yeah, Duke Nukem Time to Kill was our real Duke Nukem fix. And for me, it's still the best Duke Nukem game. Um, do, you know, if you consider Duke Nukem Forever that was released in the Xbox 360. And that's one of the worst games ever made, let alone... Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we've already covered my first like, which is that it has always been my favourite Duke Nukem game. Um, but one of the things I love about it, one of the reasons why I think I love it so much, is how they do the time travel element. And that you get a set of levels that are all different as well, <laughs> set in one particular period, where the costumes reflect that, and the music reflects that. And that's so fucking cool. I love that. Yeah, I, I mean, I think my, if, if my favourite section was other than by the uh, Col uh, Coliseum. Book. Oh, Coliseum, yeah. I think, yeah, but I, I think for my, my favourite section was probably the cowboy section. I thought it was very clever. The music was fantastic, you know, and I don't know. I mean, there's so many positive things that I can say about this game. Obviously, there's, every game got negatives, of course. Oh, well, you'll so get to positive. them. Yeah, I mean, but there's so many positives. I mean, but for, I mean, like I said, I, I, I can only pick up three of them, but I'm, I'm going to go with the multiplayer mode. Okay, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. I, I mean, I can remember as a kid, you know, me, you and Liam, it was either uh, RPG battles yep. or pipe bomb and dynamite, dynamite battles. And we're just literally standing there throwing thousands of pipe bombs at each other and praying to God we don't blow each other up. Yeah. Um. Uh, this right, see, this was not my favorite moment scenes, bits of music. I had one, and it was this specific thing you've just mentioned. So mm. I'll talk about it now, then. Um, yeah, I 100% agree. I've written multiplayer with dynamite pipe bombs only. Um, mm. I don't know what it was about us and multiplayer, but this is the second game we used to play uh, when we were younger, where we set ourselves our own rule and made the game for us 10 times more fun. The other one being Goldeneye yep. and Proximity Mines only. Um, oh, yeah which is a classic, classic way of playing. If, you, if you've not done that, get some friends, family together, put yourself yeah. in a small map and make it proximity mines only. It is a fucking blast to survive that. Yeah, we definitely. did it with Duke Nukem and it was pipe bombs and dynamite only. And it was launch as many as you could, as quickly as you possibly could, and then try yeah. and survive. And it was as yeah, simple no. as that. And the map we used to always particularly choose was the Western one that had kind of like a dip in the middle and it was a circle. Yeah, broken buildings and stuff around it, yeah. Yeah, that was always our kind of map of choice. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I had that for, like, favourite moments, scenes, but the music. But going back to things I like as well, ton of weapons. Like, so many weapons in Duke Nukem, man. Uh, just like the actual 3D game and stuff like that, you had varieties. And you kind of always, you kind of always use them as well. Like, you switch between them. You weren't sticking to one or two. You were using mm. them all. Yeah. Yeah, Great I mean, voice definitely. acting. Funny. Mm clever at times you know yeah yeah i mean there's so many positive things like you said the, the weapons the, the choice of weapons was still so many you know i mean my, my personal favorites were the rifle and the shotgun yeah. you know shooting shooting a pig with, with the shotgun and watching it either explode or just the the, the way it reload, reload the, yeah. the sound of it you know um even the um, uh, Desert Eagle, I, I, I thought, because it, 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 it was a PS1 game, I thought the designs of the weapons were pretty impressive too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I loved the two-handed Desert Eagle shooting. Love that, yeah, two-handed yeah, Desert yeah. Eagle shooting. Uh, anything else in likes? I can go on, but, but, but yeah, so, no, I mean... Well, what don't you like then? <sighs> okay, well... <sighs> obviously, it was a PS1 game, so obviously, graphically... 
it looked like you were playing Final Fantasy VII, the original one, <laughs> Square Blocks. Yeah, yeah, it's, like yeah. It's it's uh, again, you know, it's of an era, so we can't. Ju- I won't judge it too harshly on that. Yeah. So one of the things I want to agree on is that when I think of doing Time to Kill, I remember the first half of the game more than I do the latter half. And that's not because I never made it that far. That game has been completed multiple times. Mm. And it made me go, oh, maybe the latter half isn't as memorable as the first half. You know, I think of uh, ancient Greece, uh, ancient Greece, ancient Rome and stuff like that. I, I vaguely yeah. remember them. But when I contrast them to the earlier stages, they're not quite as memorable. So I think the game might lose its way further along. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, the first the first part of the game was obviously, well, I mean, when it's your, when, when the only experience of playing Duke Nukem is playing Duke, Duke Nukem 3D at the start, and then obviously then you go to that game, it's, the, the first, I mean, I mean, like the first three or four areas were always more exciting. Like I, said, I mean, yeah. the cowboy area, which is the second area, was was, my, was always my personal favourite. Yeah. Obviously, the music and all that, you know. But, yeah, I mean, I can't really... Again, I've, I've not played this game for quite a while, quite a while, but I can't really think of the later level levels. Yeah. I mean, so it, it can't stand out. Yeah. Um. Oh, what if you remember this? Uh, plat- while it was cool to control and all that, when it came to doing platforming sections, now I played this quite recently, um, and it's in the mines in particular is where I lost my shit. Because in the mines, uh, there are platforming sections where you've got to jump on the blocks and stuff like that, and this oh, is yeah. the game that's good for that. But in the mines, it's either a death drop or lava, which you, which you can get out of the lava, but it, your health drops so quickly, you're basically dead anyway. Platforming in this game is not good. Not good at all. So uh, I've, um, I, I forgot about the, the lava bits, but there's one specific area where it's, it's actually quite early on in the game where you're fighting those, those, those weird alien creatures with the, with the guns, and you've got to, like, there's water below you in a platform. You've got to jump from literally little section to little section to little section, and every time you miss, you land back in the water again. Yeah, it's so frustrating because because the swimming was awkward to control. Yeah, you know, cameras and the stuff like that. Yeah, yeah and and it, and it, it is jump too. And there's, there's times where you got to do like some massive jumps because obviously like you can jump the highest man in the world. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, Standing still and jumping seven feet in the fucking yeah, air. Jump, jump straight up just to grab grab one and lift yourself up. Yeah. And the, other, the last thing I don't like, I don't know if I remember this, but basically you had to find secret stopwatches to unlock levels for multiplayer. Yeah. Bullshit, man. Because they're secret. They're hidden in the... And the Duke Nukem has a lot of secrets. And they're <laughs> yeah. not always easy to find. So no. a lot of the time, there were a lot of levels early on we just never played because we never got our stopwatches. Yeah. Don't make yeah, multi- I, multiplayer secret. Yeah, I, I mean, it's very weird for like a old-style PS1 game to do that, you know. Yeah. They, be, nowadays, obviously, you get like achievements for getting all your secrets and stuff like that. You know? But yeah, that, that, that was very strange for a PS1 game. I mean, I think it's something they carried over from Duke Nukem 3D because Duke Nukem yeah. has always had lots of secrets in the levels. And I think they were like, well, it's a Duke Nukem game. We've got to do that as well. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I, 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 again, probably my final dislike. I, I mean, it's. It's a bit picky one because I because I, I always found it I found it funny but it was annoying at the same time. But when you get an RPG, you, you better make sure your shot is accurate because if you miss and hit a wall, you're blowing up and dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as it should be though. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. No. But it, it was it, it was funny at the time because obviously when, when you hit the wall and then he goes, he does this weird scream like ah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Well, you already covered my favourite moment scenes, bits of music. Do you have anything to add there? I mean, my favourite moment was obviously the the multiplayer. I mean, and obviously music. Each area has its own individual music. My my entire section would be obviously the cowboy section because I always find. Yeah, when I think of it, I hear that (laughs) boom, that western twang. You know. Here's a question then, to so we don't just gloss over this. Can you remember a particular joke or reference in the game that you thought was the funniest or the best or anything like that? I think because because there's there's so I mean there's, there's, there's so, so many, many there's so many too many references and like um I, uh, so I, I I'm sort of about something about about chewing bubble gum I chew bubble gum or something oh oh yeah but that's from that's that's Dunicum 3D and that's from oh, uh, the movie They Live yeah mm. I always really like like laughed not so much nowadays because I guess you're you're older and a little bit more like less childish mm. but they're using the phone. 
and you'd hear um, you basically call a sex line. Oh and yeah, yeah. He'd call her Laura. <laughs> obviously referencing Tomb Raider in that, you yeah. know, childish, but yeah, just like very d- Newcomb, you know. Oh, I've got um, one little thing for if, if people are, are, I'm sure you do, but obviously in, in the first area, you're obviously going to a strip club, don't you? Yeah. Don't shoot, no, don't shoot the strippers. Yeah, well, that's a that's a given throughout the entire game series. Yeah. Don't yeah. Like, in the Western world, um, there are can can dancers. <laughs> yeah, 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 don't don't shoot the women. That's the point. Yeah. Luke's there to save the women. There's a reason yeah. why the follow-up to this was called Land of the Babes, which oh, yeah. is a game that I really didn't play much of. I can more the same. I, I, I might have played maybe thirty minutes of it, but it never, it never really took. Never my grabbed, did it? No, which no, is no. Weird, no. Isn't it? I mean, um, time because because I, I haven't played time at all in quite a while now, but. Yeah. I think the, the opening scene, is that the one where he, he, he rides a motorbiking? That's right, with the, the, uh, music, the Stabbing the Westward. Proper, the music is proper banging too. Like yeah, Stabbing Westward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's cool, yeah. yeah. You know you mentioned that, I didn't put it in, but you're right. That introduction with that yeah. tune, that Stabbing Westward track and all that, is actually pretty mm-hmm. fucking cool. It's really cool, yeah. yeah. There you go, Duke Nukem Time to Kill. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there, that's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts and of course if you like this video do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?